archaeologists in the African desert just discovered something so terrifying that it completely exposes the hidden history of Africa that the government is trying to hide. Scientists discovered old cities and civilizations that disappeared long ago. These stories come from places like caves in Ethiopia, old writings in Egypt, and tunnels in Botswana. Africa has many signs of these old civilizations, but we have to ask, are we really ready to learn about our harsh and scary history? After these discoveries, you will never look at Africa the same ever again. So, let's discover these fascinating discoveries in Africa that scientists made. So, in 2021, a groundbreaking discovery was announced by archaeologists in Ethiopia, revealing a previously unknown chapter in human history. Nestled within the Gobia Cliff Caves, remnants of a 5,000-year-old village were unearthed, offering a rare glimpse into the life and culture of the ancient Awash civilization, one of the earliest societies to have graced the region. This extraordinary find underscores the rich tapestry of African history and the pivotal role Ethiopia played as a cradle of ancient civilization. The presence of a village within a cliff cave system suggests a deliberate choice for protection, be it from potential invaders, wild animals, or even harsh weather conditions. The natural formations would have been advantageous for early civilizations, offering both shelter and vantage points. These caves might have also served as communal spaces, where rituals, gatherings, or discussions could take place, fostering a sense of community. The spatial arrangement of these caves and their proximity to one another would shed light on early urban planning, settlement hierarchy, and social organization. The stone tools unearthed indicate more than just basic survival tools. Their designs, wear, and crafting techniques can reveal a myriad of information about their specific uses, whether for hunting, skinning, or other purposes. The craftsmanship would provide insights into the technological capabilities and innovations of the Awash people. The name Awash resonates with historical significance. The Awash River, one of the major rivers in Ethiopia, has been central to both human habitation and agriculture activities. It is within this context that the Awash culture, named after the river, emerged and thrived. Pottery fragments unearthed can be equally illuminating. The style, decoration, and firing techniques used in their creation offer a glimpse into the aesthetic preferences, technological know-how, and possibly even the socio-cultural practices of the community. Grinding stones suggest a community that was transitioning from purely hunting and gathering to one that incorporated agriculture. By studying residue on these stones or any botanical remains in the vicinity, researchers might ascertain the types of grains cultivated and consumed, revealing dietary patterns and agricultural practices. The discovery's chronological context is essential. By understanding the timeline of the Gobia Cliff Cave settlement in relation to other regional archaeological sites, historians can piece together broader historical narratives, potentially revealing patterns of migration, trade, or cultural exchange. These findings reinforce the idea that, thousands of years ago, a sophisticated society was well established in the region, with established norms, practices, and a deep connection to their environment. In addition, in 2017, amidst the sands of Egypt, archaeologists made a discovery that further solidified the nation's reputation as a treasure trove of history. Just near the ancient capital of Memphis, they unearthed a coffin that dated back 4,400 years, meticulously crafted from cedar wood and adorned with intricate hieroglyphs. Beyond the sheer antiquity of the find, this artifact opened a window into the cultural, social, and religious nuances of Egypt's Old Kingdom era. The selection of cedar wood for the coffin immediately stands out. Cedar, a non-native wood to Egypt, had to be imported from the distant Levantine coast, primarily from the regions of modern-day Lebanon. The decision to use this exotic and precious wood signals the high status and esteem of the individual it was meant for. Cedar was not just any wood. It was a symbol of luxury and longevity. Its robust nature made it resistant to decay, and its aromatic essence added a sensory depth to the burial, ensuring the eternal rest of the deceased was undisturbed. Then there are the hieroglyphs, a written tapestry of ancient Egypt, offering layers of meaning. On such a coffin, these symbols and inscriptions would have played several roles. They would provide a posthumous identity, marking out the name and title of the deceased, ensuring his memory lived on and that he was recognized in the world beyond. Protective spells and incantations would likely have been inscribed to safeguard the departed soul, 
guiding it safely through the underworld and shielding it from potential threats. The hieroglyphs also resonate with religious undertones, containing prayers and hymns to various deities, underscoring the deceased's piety and hopes for divine favour. And of course, they might weave tales of the individual's life, charting out achievements, experiences and moments of significance. The discovery is more than just a relic. It is a tangible connection to the epoch of the Old Kingdom, when the majestic Pyramid of Giza was constructed and pharaohs ruled with unparalleled grandeur. The high-ranking official interred within this cedar sanctuary was undoubtedly a vital cog in the vast machinery of pharaonic governance. By understanding his life and his final resting place, we gain precious insights into the administrative, trade and ritualistic practices of the time, revealing the socio-political intricacies of ancient Egypt. Also in the heart of Botswana, nestled amidst the vast landscapes, lies a testament to human persistence and creativity, the tunnels of Sidolo Hills. Discovered in the 1960s, these tunnels are not just any underground structures. They are believed to be over 100,000 years old, earning them the title of the oldest known man-made tunnels in Africa. But it is not just their age that makes them significant. The rock paintings that adorn their walls provide a glimpse into the lives and artistic prowess of the people who once inhabited this region. In understanding the significance of the Sedillo Hills tunnels, one must first appreciate the broader context. Africa, often referred to as the cradle of humankind, has been the setting for numerous archaeological and anthropological discoveries that trace the origins and evolution of humanity. Amidst this rich tapestry, the tunnels and their associated rock art stand out as a unique contribution to our understanding of early human societies on the continent. The very existence of tunnels in prehistoric times suggests an advanced level of understanding and skill. Crafting a tunnel is not a simple endeavour. It requires knowledge of the terrain, expertise in excavation without causing collapses, and an understanding of structural integrity. The tunnels at Sedillo Hills, having withstood the test of time, are a testament to the technical proficiency of their creators. While their exact purpose remains a topic of debate among scholars, hypotheses range from them being used as ritual sites, shelters from the elements or predators, or simply as communal spaces for social gatherings. Their depth, orientation, and spatial arrangement might hold clues to their intended function, but definitive conclusions are elusive. Perhaps the most captivating feature of the Sudillo Hills is the rock art that graces their walls. They are not random sketches. They are purposeful illustrations that tell tales of life, beliefs, and perhaps even dreams. The animals painted on the walls might have had ritualistic or symbolic importance, representing totems, food sources, or spiritual guides. The depiction of humans alongside them suggests the coexistence of man with nature, a relationship of respect, fear, and admiration. The artistry in these paintings, with varying degrees of detail and expression, reflects not just the skill of the artists, but also the evolution of artistic techniques over time. Furthermore, Graham Hancock, renowned for his speculative theories about lost ancient civilizations, has often emphasized the limitations of mainstream archaeology. His non traditional approach has stirred controversy and fascination in equal measure, leading many to question and rethink established historical narratives. Hancock's explorations suggest the existence of advanced civilizations, long before conventionally acknowledged historical timelines. In this context, Discoveries like the ancient Awash village resonate deeply with Hancock's quest to uncover humanity's lost heritage. 5,000 years ago, while the great civilizations of Mesopotamia and Egypt were in their nascent stages, the Awash people had already established a structured society with its own unique cultural and artistic identity. This challenges the conventional view of civilization evolution suggesting a more intricate web of human development spread across different pockets of the world. In line with Hancock's ideology, the Awash findings beckon us to expand our understanding of history and acknowledge the potential of numerous such civilizations that might have flourished and faded away, leaving behind only whispers of their existence. The question then arises, how many more Gobias are out there waiting to be discovered? How many more narratives of human ingenuity resilience and artistry are yet to be unveiled. At the helm of the Awash society, leaders or elders likely stood, guiding their people with wisdom and authority. Their decisions, 
often influenced by the needs and aspirations of the community, carved the path for the future. Leadership, while pivotal, was complemented by the spiritual sphere. The Awash culture, like many ancient societies, revered the divine, turning the spiritual head to bridge the chasm between the tangible and the ethereal. These spiritual leaders, be they priests, shamans, or wise seers, wielded a profound influence, guiding rituals and shaping beliefs. Parallel to the realms of leadership and spirituality, the practical aspects of society flourished. Craftsmen and artisans, with their dexterous hands and keen eyes, transformed raw materials into essential tools, beautiful pottery, and a myriad other artifacts. The creations not only met the daily needs of the Awash people, but also echoed the heartbeat of a culture that took pride in its artistry. Supplementing this were the hunters, gatherers, and agriculturists. Their roles, though grounded in the earth and its boundaries, were anything but mundane. Their understanding of the environment ensured that the community was nourished, its granaries full, and its future secured. Yet, it wasn't just the land that enriched the Awash culture. The river itself was a conduit of prosperity. Along its banks and waters, trade thrived. Close-knit communities would have exchanged surplus, ensuring a steady supply of resources. But the reach of the Awash traders wasn't confined to the immediate vicinity. The river, in its meandering journey, connected this culture to distant lands and peoples. Exotic goods, stories, and innovations flowed in adding layers of complexity to an already vibrant society. This exchange wasn't just material. With goods came ideas. The influx of new concepts, techniques, and perhaps even beliefs subtly influenced the Awash way of life. Traders and merchants, in their interactions, became the torchbearers of cultural amalgamation. However, the path of trade wasn't always smooth. Challenges, be they in the form of fluctuating resources, unpredictable river courses, or conflicts with neighbors tested the resilience and adaptability of the Awash people. The dynamics of trade inevitably impacted the societal structure. Prosperous merchant families might have risen in prominence, leading to nuanced economic distinctions within the community. The ripple effects of trade extended beyond economics, potentially reshaping art, rituals, and daily life. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.